Interesting little visitor center. I'm at Ha Ha Tonka State Park in the dead center of Missouri at the southernmost tip of Lake of the Ozarks, which is a huge man-made lake just in the center of the state. I got here really late. I had some problems with a van, some uh, low power warnings. Thankfully, I got it all sorted out at a Ford dealership. So the van is just fine, but I lost like most of the day. But what I'm gonna start with today is to see the ruins of an old early 1900s castle. It's down the road a little ways. Should be very interesting. There's also some great hiking trails here. This seems to be the best part of the whole Lake of the Ozarks Park if you're into hiking and stuff. Bunch of caves too. I might have to stick around another day. So I did read up on the story of the castle. In 1903, a wealthy businessman from Missouri named Robert Snyder wanted to build an elaborate estate on this amazing plot of land. There's a ledge right here with a view of the valley below. And he died in one of the country's first automobile accidents less than a year into its construction. And so his children did eventually finance the rest of the castle, had it completed. But it sounds like no one ever lived in it. They just kind of leased it as a, as a hotel for a while. In the 1940s, it burned down for the most part. And then I think in the 1970s, it just started to fall apart. And now all that's left are a couple of stone ruins. Interesting story. Apparently he lost a lot of his property when they built the Bagnell Dam, which is how Lake of the Ozarks was created in the late 1920s. I think construction started in 1929 creating one of the biggest lakes in the country. If you look on a map, you can see why they call it the Snake of Missouri. It's very serpentine shape, it's very odd. I think it's technically three rivers that got backed up because of the dam. There's some hiking trails here too. Devil's Kitchen Trail sounds very enticing, right up my alley. Dolomite Trail and the Del Rim Trail. I think I'm gonna try to do all of these while I still have a few hours of daylight. You can see what the structure looked like before it burned down. Well, apparently someone took a photo of the actual thing on fire. That's kind of crazy. October 21st, 1942, right during the war. It's nice to walk along the rim of the scenic part of the country, the Ozark Mountains, which I've been to a couple times before. This place is at the northern edge of the Ozark Mountains, which are mostly in northwest Arkansas. I've been there a couple times before, taken some spectacular photos of the place. I even had one of the photos featured on CBS News a couple years back. In any case, here's what's left of the castle. Check this out. Amazing piece of property for sure, and this is a seriously big structure. What a view they must have had. I found the description a little odd in the info panel back there. It said he wanted to build a European style castle, but there are so many different styles of castle in Europe. That seems oddly vague. <laughs> yeah, in any case, I would say this is more of a two-door style based on the, the arches and the, and the mortar work, but I'm no expert. What do you guys think? Gonna stretch my legs on what is called the Quarry Trail and the Lake Trail. Looks to be about three miles round trip. I found it kind of ironic that he built the castle using uh, mule driven carts while he himself died in one of the First Nations automobile accidents while it was being constructed. Part of the estate included constructing these elaborate greenhouses. He wanted the estate to be self-sufficient in terms of food production. But not a lot is known about the construction. Um, very much a mystery. That infographic that I just passed said, they don't know if the greenhouses ever worked or if the plumbing ever worked or if they had any food, no one knows. I guess he just kind of built this retreat in the middle of the woods and really went kind of off-grid with it or whatever you want to call it all right i'm at a i'm at a
trail junction here. Boat dock this way, quarry trail this way. Um, I think I would rather see a quarry than a lake. So let's go this way. Might be a good idea to use a Gaia GPS or some other GPS tracking app for the trails here. I noticed a bunch of social paths going this way and that way. And it would be easy to get lost if I wasn't tracking this. Another thing I thought was kind of ironic about today's catastrophe with the van is when I was doing this road trip last year, by the time I got to Springfield, Missouri, I had a serious medical incident and I spent a whole week in a hospital there in Springfield, Missouri. This time I came back to almost the same area. Springfield is like 45 minutes away <laughs> and now it's my van with a major thing wrong with it. Thankfully I got it all fixed, but what is it about Missouri for screwing up my trips? All right, I do see a lake down here. That must be Lake of the Ozarks, but this trail is slowly sidewinding, switchbacking back up to where I came from. I'm not sure where to find this quarry. Maybe this is the quarry. Yeah, I don't really get it. It's nice to get some exercise though, I'll say that. But looking at my GPS app, I am gonna go this way through this bald patch of land. Looks like I can get a couple miles of walking in doing this long circuitous route that I guess goes through the perimeter of this Snyder guy's property. Lake of the Ozarks is like Lake Powell. They milk it for recreational purposes. This place is a tourism gold mine. I came here on a Tuesday night. No hotels. Anyway, everything's sold out Tuesday night, Wednesday night. It's not even summer anymore. And it's not even a weekend and everything is sold out. Also, something like 99% of the coastline is privately owned. There's, I tried to find some public beaches where I can go shoot the sunset. Couldn't really find anything unless I want to trespass on someone's property or go onto a marina or something, which I don't really want to do. Yeah, one thing about lake resorts like this is I have no personal interest of going on the water. I'm not a big fan of being in a boat. I like to be on my feet walking around. I, you can't do that in a boat. It's just like being in a jail to me. That's another reason I would never do one of those cruise line things. I can't believe people still do those in the post pandemic era. They're just disease factories and you're trapped. Ugh, anyway, I'm ranting. Yeah, Lake of the Ozarks is huge though. It's literally like a dragon on the map. It's got something like 1,100 miles of coastline, which is more coastline than the entire state of California. That's how crazy big this lake is. Look on a map, you'll see what I'm talking about. Maybe this little pit was the quarry site? Not much to see as far as I can tell. Yep, this is the quarry. I can tell by the chiseling on the edge, the way it was cut out. This quarry was used for building the house. That's where he sourced all the granite from. Chopped it up at this little ex, you know, this little spot right here. I'm not sure why they chose this spot. It's kind of in a weird location. And carried it by cart by mule up to the top of that ledge and built the house with it. Kind of interesting. Finally made it back to the parking area. That was a fun little hike, that quarry trail. On the other side of the parking area is the Dell Rim Trail which takes you by a very large prominent tower. I don't know if you can see it. No, I guess you can't see it from here, but we're gonna walk by it. And there is the tower I was talking about. It looks like we actually can go up that. Oh, now that is cool. Here's a little infographic about it. Okay, this Snyder guy must have had a lot of money. He also built this tower right here just as a water tower for gravity fed water to his mansion. Please tell me we can go in it. Please tell me we can go in it. Oh, nope. Well, I guess the most obvious thing, I'll try to sneak my phone in past the bars. There's no stairs to the top. So if you got in, you wouldn't be able to go anywhere. It looks like there's a platform up there. I might extend my stick a little. Let's see, can I? 
actually get a shot looking up from inside. There we go. Yeah, this was the water tower for his mansion. It looks like there's actually a herd path if you jump over this that goes off into the woods right there. It's pretty well developed. But since I'm trying to set him a good example and put this on YouTube, I won't be doing any off-trail shenanigans this time around. What I do want to go see now is that natural bridge. And it looks like I lucked out. This sign right here on the Dell Ridge Trail says the natural bridge is right down there. I'm all for seeing a natural bridge, although I do want to continue checking out this beautiful boardwalk trail. I heard voices down in the gorge below, so I think that must circumnavigate, you know, kind of do switchbacks down to the bottom near where the lake is. There's a little picnic area here and the road that we drove in on. I think the natural bridge is down this very obscure little barely visible trail. I have a feeling that the thing I'm about to walk on is the natural bridge. The question is, how do I get down to the bottom of it? There must be some offshoot off to the side. Yeah, this is definitely the natural bridge. Oh, wow. This is a pretty impressive one. I've seen some bad ones, but this is cool. highest concentration of natural bridges in the U.S. is not in Arches Na National Park in Utah. It's actually in Kentucky, a place called Red River Gorge. I went there two years ago and tons of stuff like this. I spent two days photographing every arch and every possible light. And you know what? I did nothing with those shots. I edited a lot of them, but I ended up not publishing them any anywhere. And it's part of the reason that I decided that photography maybe just isn't for me. Because you can just get so carried away with it, folks. Devote so much time to it. And then not publish it. Or, it ha you know, it's very difficult to monetize it or make it a sustainable hobby. So, today is very different. Part of me wants to have that camera bag on my back right now. Setting up my tripod, shooting all this, getting into my zen moment. But part of me is really relieved that I'm not doing that today. I think now it's time to walk through it and get this part over with. I brought all my camera gear in my van for this trip. I made special shelving in my van just for my camera bags. And this was the one spot in the US that I was planning on, I would definitely be setting up my camera and shooting here and spending a few hours, and I'm not doing it. And what I just said back there about photography maybe being not for me, you know, it's hard for me to say that, but I had a lot of fun with photography. I spent years doing that. I had some success. I won some awards. Um, I did monetize it a little bit, but it's such a massive use of your time folks and the years just drop off the calendar and you're making a couple hundred bucks a month if you're lucky editing photos every single night hiking every single day shooting all day and all night for what i just reached this conclusion that if i'm gonna pour all of my time and all of my energy into some all-encompassing hobby i need to have some return on that investment so I guess it's it's kind of painful for me to realize that I may never take out my camera again and shoot again. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. It's as if, as if it's gone forever and I'm starting to realize that. I actually haven't used my camera in almost a year. That's right, folks, almost a year. I recharged the battery and it just kind of drained on itself because I never used it. Same with my drone. And if I'm not going to shoot it here, I'm not going to shoot it anywhere. But enough about me. Look at this cool trail alongside this crag. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm back in the Ozarks. You can totally climb down to the water below. And if you can hear me over 
over that plain. There's a cute little trail here that kind of winds between some rocks onto a beautiful part. Missouri Spring, I think it was called, or Haha ha Tonka Spring or something. Missouri's 12th largest spring. Yeah, just water just spitting out of the ground over there. God, what a beautiful day to hike. I'm enjoying the hikes on this trip a lot more. It might be because I don't have that big camera bag on my back. Yet another reason why I just don't see myself busting that camera gear out for a long time. Now for this trail, now that I'm down on the river's edge, I looked on all trails. I could potentially just keep walking this thing along the entire shore of the Lake of the Ozarks. Obviously, I'm not gonna do that. Sunset will be soon. I think it's in like an hour. I'm gonna walk for a little bit more, then turn around and start going back up the ridge. Haha ha Tonka Castle costs its owner everything, even his own life. It makes you think about what life is all about, material things or experiences. I drove from these ruins to Springfield, Missouri this night, where last year I came the closest I've ever been to death. That made me wonder, is there a material equivalent to bad experiences? Ruins, I suppose. Ruins just stand there, decaying in the rain, until you just stop noticing them.